CataractCoach.com. Here's how I handle soft cataracts. So my goal is safety, and there really is no need for nucleofractus. So this is a patient who has a cataract. I know you're thinking, where's the cataract? But it's really there. The red reflex here is washing it out. And the patient on the young side, it's the patient's second eye. The patient's also a high hyprope, so we're going to be able to treat that hypropia at once as well. Now, you can tell the patient's young because you look at the eyelashes there, which are, by the way, nicely sequestered out of the way, but they're nice and young looking. So here's our main incision. Definitely want a good incision there. This has to last this patient's lifetime. Tends to be these younger patients are the ones who have these soft cataracts. So we'll go inside there. I want to measure out my rectus here. We're going to show you the complete cataract case. Do not worry. It's just five minutes. And you will learn a lot, I promise, well worth your time invested here. So here comes the rexus. Again, I really want this centered on the patient's visual axis. And that's why it's slightly nasally displaced. And I really want it to be a beautiful 5 millimeter rexus. I don't want to have anything irregular here. I want that rexus to overlap the optic 360 degrees. Now for the technique I'm going to show you, you know, a, a rexus of 5 millimeters would be just about perfect there. I just measured it, 5 millimeters. And... Okay, we turn the lights off there for a minute. I don't know why. Here comes the hydrodissection. This is the key. Check it out. Fluid wave and don't stop. That's not forceful. It's very low pressure, but it's continuous. Wave after wave after wave after wave to get the nucleus up. And I don't stop. Delineate. Look at that. So now the whole lens is up away from the capsule bag. How much phaco energy do you need here? Basically none or minimal. So putting the phaco probe in the eye here... Let's just get this thing. Don't even try to chop it. Just use the chopper to push the piece in front of the probe. Your goal is to occlude the probe with lens material, keeping the vacuum high. And then this just emulsifies very easily. You may need zero phaco power even. But the key is to have these balanced fluidics so you have a good stable anterior chamber. And then you keep that capsule bag away from the phaco tip. Look at that chopper in the same position. That's it. Just like that, the nucleus is gone. Now it's time to do the cortex removal. So we'll do the cortex removal. Patient's dancing around a little bit. That's okay. We don't mind. And now we'll clean it up. So the key on my patients, if I'm doing a young patient, soft cataract, I want that lens out of the capsule bag. I think the risks are higher in a young person. The patient has so many more years or decades left of life, and you really have to have a you know, near perfect or perfect outcome for these patients. And that means you really have to be careful about working too much in the capsule bag. I don't want to damage the capsule bag. So we'll clean up all those cortex. We'll do a beautiful job cleaning it up, but also keep in mind the YAG capsulotomy rate, much higher in a young person. Right? Think about it. For pediatric cases, for a newborn with a congenital cataract, you know it's going to be such an intense PCO that not only do you open up the posterior capsule, you even do an anterior vitrectomy. And I think the same thing applies to even to, to other young kids who are having surgery. So yes, it diminishes when you turn 20-something or 30-something, but still I think your risk or your rate of PCO is much higher. And so that's okay, keeping that in mind. We'll clean up the bag as much as we can. And in the post-op period, if the patient needs a YAG laser capsulotomy, hey, we got that covered. I got the YAG laser right here. So here comes the lens going nicely into the capsule bag, placing it in very gently and get that to open up. And let's see what we got here. Single piece acrylic lens. Is it a monofocal? Let's look carefully. Or is it an EDOF? Oh, look at that. Capsule polishing with the chopper tip. Look at that. So I, I am a perfectionist. I like to polish that up a little bit. So yeah, it looks like a monofocal lens. And we'll get that rotated around a little bit. Put it in the position that we want. And look at the overlap of the optic by that rexus. I like it. It's a good overlap. Let's go inside here, remove viscoelastic, and we'll get this lens centered up in the patient's visual axis. Simple case. This is an easy one. Even if you're a young guy or young gal just starting in practice, you can easily and successfully uh, operate on these patients. Again, keep in mind the important things of a beautiful incision, a beautiful rexus to last a patient's lifetime, and get the nucleus out of the caps or bag. You don't want to have that nucleus sitting there in the caps or bag when you're trying to buzz into it. Because this is the case where you go in there with the phaco probe, you say, I'm going to do divide and conquer. It's what I always do. And this nucleus is so soft, on your very first pass up for that groove, bzz, bang.
bang, it hits the posterior capsule. And now you're sunk. Triumph syndrome, the next thing I'm going to do here is a little triumph syndrome going inside of the eye. Now, these patients tend to have more inflammation than their older counterparts. Remember, things are a little different when you're young. The cornea is more elastic. The capsular bag can be more elastic. The, the anterior capsule can be a more elastic. Things can be a little different here. And so you want to take your time to really you know, take all that into account. Now, this patient has a very mod or modest degree of astigmatism. Looks like with the rule. So we'll do just a small limbal relax incision there and check that to make sure everything looks good. So nice looking case. Thank you for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. And try this technique the next time you have a soft PSC cataract.